Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. I'm very excited to spend some more time with you in the Word. Um, just a real quick note, I'm making this video much earlier than I normally do because I do have a career fair to get to. Um, that's going to take up most of my day just because of travel and the time um, that it runs. So it's so early in my day that I don't have an update to you guys. Um, you know, it's I'm hopeful that I'm gonna hear something from somebody today because I had a really exciting Friday and then crickets all week. So um, I'm just, I'll let you guys know tomorrow um, if I hear anything. But I'm just gonna jump right back into where we were yesterday because I wanna make sure that I get this to you um, to have today. So again, we are currently in the book of Matthew. I am going to stay in chapter seven. I think that it's very important that we finish this up, uh, mostly because I was not led to go anywhere else. Um, you know, so I think it, there's some more stuff for us to read in here. So yesterday we read um, verse 15 through 23, but we're gonna jump over to verse one. And we're gonna read verse one through, it looks like five. So hopefully this one's a little bit quicker because there's less verses to go over with you. This chapter, chapter seven in the book of Matthew, um, starts with talking about judging others. So the, even non-Christians are familiar with the fact that the Bible says not to judge people. And that's something that the culture today uses all the time. It uses all the time that we can't judge people. So the sin that they're living in and what they're doing with their lives, like you can't say anything about it. That's what culture is saying. Now, if you remember, we read when we were reading in Galatians, we read that you very much can say something about it. You can restore your brother or sister lovingly. You can recognize sin. You can say something about it. What we cannot do is judge them. Now, judge is being used in the same way that God will judge us in our lives. You know, we who are we to say that God cannot restore somebody, who God cannot use what they're doing, who, you know, maybe they're struggling with sin. And, and in, you know, when they're alone, they're praying, you know, God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry because I don't want to do these things anymore, but I just keep doing it. You know, I told you guys that we are slaves to sin if we do not repent and if we do not ask God to help us with that. If we do not give those things over to the cross and change the way we live our life and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us out of that sin, we will keep coming back to it. And that's everything. That's not the big sins, but you know, there are some sins that people see and there are some sins that people don't see. And so we cannot judge somebody by what we saw in a very small moment of their life. Okay. And um, so we're going to get started here. I'm a little bit excited about this one. Um, just again, because I'm just so happy with what God's been doing. Um, you know, being making these videos with you guys is such a spiritual experience for me and it has it has been making a huge difference in my heart um, and in my life so verse one is do not judge or you too will be judged for in the same way you judge others you will be judged and with the measure you use it will be measured to you so again you know we're not to judge people and however we judge them, God will judge us. We need to repent from that type of behavior. We need to stop looking at other people. And remember, we are not fighting against flesh. Okay, we are all children of God. We are all walking different lives. Just because I've been a Christian most of my life doesn't mean those who are, I mean, there's people I know that, became a Christian in their very late years, who are beyond 50, beyond 60, who uh, just find Christ very late in life. And who am I? Who am I to say, well, you know, you messed up a whole lot. You, you did all these things and for all those years, like, like how are you gonna get into heaven? That's not me, that's not, I don't have the ability to say who goes to heaven and who doesn't go to heaven. 
That's, that's not, I don't have the right to judge people. Only God has the right to judge people. Also, you know, I said it a little bit ago, but what we see is just the, the tip of the iceberg for people. We cannot know truly what's in their heart. We cannot ever say that, you know, hey, good luck with that. We, and that, we can't say that somebody is a bad person because, again, our fights are not with people. It is with the evil spirits and the principalities of this world. That's where our fight is, and that's where we need to take this. When we see somebody in sin, we do not need to judge them. We need to pray for them. We need to pray that they will hear the Holy Spirit, that they will find conviction in their hearts to stop what they're doing, Okay. Because, again, that's their life. Now, I know that that's hard. It is so hard when it's somebody that you love, somebody that you know. It's, it's terrifying to think about people that you love not going to heaven. But that's them. That's their choice. God gave us all a choice to choose him or not to choose him. And if God gives us a choice, if God says that it's okay... For us to have the ability to choose and that's what he wants for his creation then who are we to force people to live their life a certain way we're not that's not we cannot judge people on the decisions that they make we cannot force people to live their life for god we have to be an example of people for people i'm sorry we have to pray for people and trust and trust in god to make a difference in their life and to bring them out of that sin and that can take a while I shared yesterday that there were some things that I was participating in that were go completely against the word of God for years. It, I don't want to say it was a part of my identity, but I mean, it was a passion of mine. I would talk about it with anyone, you know, um, and God one is using that sin to help me teach other people, but also he pulled me out of that to where I don't even want to do that anymore. I get disgusted. I feel so wrong when I'm in the presence of those things. You know, so no matter what somebody's doing, no matter what they did do, through Jesus, we can all be restored. Okay? So we don't have the right to judge someone. We do not have the right to say whether someone's going to get to heaven or if they're going to go to hell. We don't. But with that said, as we read in Galatians, you can restore someone lovingly and you should take on the burdens of the brother or sister and supporting them in that walk. Okay, we can recognize. That somebody is living in sin. This is not turn a blind eye, which is what the culture wants us to do. They want us to turn a blind eye. Okay, we're not going to pretend that people are living their life right. But we are not going to judge them in the way that we expect God to judge them. Because we are not God. We do not know the mind of God. Now, can you get to know the heart of God? Can you get to know the spirit of God? Yes. But at the end of the day... There are so many things that we just cannot comprehend. So no matter how much you think you know, you don't know it all. You are not God. You cannot judge somebody. If you feel the need to judge someone, if you are in the presence or viewing something that just goes 100% against your spirit and just makes you, you know, cringe. Oh, sorry, my cat's jumping on stuff. You know... In that moment, instead of speaking ill about somebody, instead of gossiping about somebody, instead of, you know, cursing somebody. Because when we say negative things about people, we are speaking curses. Remember, God created the world with words, okay? Let there be light is what he said. When we say things to people, about people, over people, or even ourselves, Okay? When we say stuff about ourselves, we are speaking curse. I mean, how many people do you know, or even you yourself, who are told that they were or are a certain type of person? Who they will or will not amount to certain type of things? 
and then you do. Because those are curses over your life. Those are curses over the lives of people, over your children, over your family. When you are saying things about your parents, about your children, about your siblings, about your aunts, your uncles, about your friends, about your coworkers, about even people you don't know. You're speaking curses over them. And we are not to judge. We are not to say those things. Because God is the one and only judge. And that's what it's talking about here. If you judge others, God will judge you by the same measure that you judged others. Verse 3, it says, Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? So again, it's just reminding us that we are sinners. Just because somebody's sinning and they're sinning in a way that we think is worse than how we sin, sin is sin. God sees sin the same. It's all bad. It will all separate us from him without Jesus. We need to work on ourselves. And that's what it says here. When you go into, um, oh, actually, let's go through verse four and five. So how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to restore the speck from your brother's eye. Again, you know, we refer to the church body as brothers and sisters because we are all children in Christ. We are all brothers and sisters in the family of Christ. Okay, so it's talking about the church body when it says that. It's not talking about specifically your brother or sister, though that could be your true blood brother or sister. Regardless, that was instruction from Jesus to remove, to deal with the plank in your own eye. So what that is, the plank is your sin, okay? You need to deal with your own sin before you can go and rebuke other people, okay? In, in this, it's judging other people. But uh, what that is, is not, again, that we can't recognize that somebody is in sin and that we can't support them, gently restoring them, taking on the burdens of that sin for them and, and helping them through the situation. But it is important, and the instruction from Jesus is to deal with the plank in your own eye. Because again, we're only seeing a speck of somebody's life. So we're judging or, or you, you could be judging somebody off of just a small bit of their life, a small part of their sin, where you have a whole, all of your sin. It's yours. You're aware of everything. Whether or not you're doing something about it, you know, that's between you and God. But you need to, you need to do something about it. If you're ever going to be able to help somebody do something about their sin. And by the way, this just came into my heart a little bit, but if you can't, support that person if this is somebody that you don't know somebody you've never met and you don't have any influence into their life just pray for them pray for them because when you sit there and you talk about them and you say bad stuff about them again you know not only speaking curses but what are you doing you're not helping anyone so if you're going to do those things and act like you're doing them in love what how are you giving them love Okay. We need to not have a holier than thou attitude. Yes, it is important that we recognize sin. It's important that we turn from sin. But everyone's walk is between them and God, not you. We are not God. We do not have the ability to judge others. Okay. And that's what that's saying in, in the scripture right there. It is not that we need to ignore sin. That is not it. The culture will tell you so. That's not true. But we cannot judge others' sin. So with that, I'm going to leave it, leave you guys. I'm going to head out of here really soon. So wish me luck. Um, I hope to have some good news for you all tomorrow. But thank you very much for everything. Thank you so much for following me. Please, again, go to YouTube if you can subscribe. I would really like to be able to meet their minimum subscription uh, requirements to be able to go live. Uh, appreciate you all for everything and have a wonderful day.